Welcome to Southwest Iceland and the Ulfsa River. This is Iceland's largest river in terms of volume of water carried. And it sits right here next to, well, flowing below the ring road, the primary highway that goes around Iceland. And we're right here near the town of Selfoss. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey here in Iceland. And we've got a, quite a mystery here that I really don't have an answer to, although there is some local interpretation of some interesting features here. So I thought we would explore these interesting features together, make some observations, maybe see what you can come up with and just figure this out as best we can together. So along the banks of the Ulfsa River, we have this basaltic lava here. This is from an eruption about 8,600 years ago uh, called the Thorsa lavas. And what's interesting about these lavas, it's actually a pretty interesting juxtaposition. Here we have the river, the Ulfsa River, which is the largest river in Iceland by volume. And right here on the banks of the river, we have what is Iceland's largest lava flow in terms of volume and area. So we have these two sort of superlative features right here next to each other. But that's not what's interesting. What's interesting here, and it just seems to be in this small little location near here, is as you walk along the area under the bridge, there's these interesting pits, these interesting craters almost, these shallow depressions, somewhat circular in shape. I'll show you a few of these here. Got another one here. Sometimes the rims are slightly uplifted they're only a meter or so in diameter. Here we have another one right here, maybe about two meters across, uh, almost perfectly circular. Couple more over here. And then let me walk you down to this really nice one over here. This is one almost like a bathtub. And let's make a few observations about these features. Uh, and you can see in places there's these depressions where there's probably one, but it's been filled in a little bit, perhaps with uh, soil and such. But this one here is pretty spectacular as well. So again, maybe um, meter, meter and a half in diameter, about four, four to five feet, maybe about, I don't know, two feet deep, maybe half a meter or so deep, maybe a little bit more than that. And a um, couple interesting things here. Let's hop down in this one. If we look at the, the walls of these depressions, you can see there's striations. There's actually lines running up and down vertically along the faces of these depressions. And they're in this same lava, the Storsa lava, again, 8,600 years old. And so, so that's what we know. Um, what are some possible mechanisms in? So then our mind starts thinking about uh, interpretations and what, what sort of processes led to these. Now, one process that would form this, especially given the proximity to this large volume river, is I've seen these before in places as well. These might be what we think of as potholes, right? Where you get, this is, might be an erosional product where you get rocks the river is carrying when the river was higher, um, circulating with the water current and those rocks can, in that vortice, kind of in a little uh, circulating pocket of water can actually like a drill bit and they can basically erode and cut down into the underlying rock forming a circular depression. And so that's one possible uh, interpretation of what we have here. But whenever I've seen those types of potholes, there's two things here I think that discount that as a possible uh, mechanism for these strange features. One is typically when you have the rocks swirling around inside the pothole, grinding down the underlying rock, eroding it deeper, you sometimes do get striations, but the striations will be parallel to the walls so that you'll actually get more horizontal lines as those rocks grind around over time and dig the crater down. The other in piece of information that's interesting here is if you look at the, the rim of this thing, it's actually a little bit uplifted. There's actually 
an uplifted rim to these circular depressions. So it seems like it's not as much one of these erosional potholes like we see with fluvial or water uh, deposits, but it might be something else. A couple, couple more over here, smaller one, uh, maybe about half a meter in diameter. Uh, and then this one's interesting right here. This one actually almost looks like somewhat like two that are sort of merged together. You can see the rim of this. This might be one big one, but there is sort of an interesting almost projection that comes out here. So I can't tell if it's two and maybe a third one down there that have kind of merged together or if it's just one large one. But this is pretty much where they end. So this is the furthest uh, upstream I could find these little features. And then looking downstream, basically, once you get past the bridge, I walked downstream quite a ways as well and didn't see any more of them either. So it, it seems to be somewhat localized, again, based on very little information, just kind of wandering around here for a few minutes. So we're left with, if they're not erosional in terms of the processes that might have created them, could they be related to the how the rock formed itself, basically this volcanic event, uh, this eruption of this lava. And you do see in places in Iceland, and I think I've done a video on these in the past, there's some really nice striations right here along the wall. Notice that the walls aren't vertical, they're steep, but they're not completely vertical for the most part. Kind of looking over here at this wall. Again, you can see these really interesting striations. Uh, again, they're almost like bathtubs, like hot tub just filling up with hot water and there you go um, but the other thing they could be and this kind of ties in with the uh, there's an interpretive sign that talks about these a little bit as well and these could be parts of these things called rootless cones or sometimes these are called hornitos and so the idea here would be as this lava was advancing across the landscape if it was moving over water uh, or very wet uh, environment, maybe a marsh, wet soil, something like that, you can get uh, explosive activity. You can basically flash all that water into steam. That steam accumulates. That's a volume increase. And then it turns into uh, a pocket of gas, which then is able to override the pressure of the lava and form this localized, very small little explosion pit. But where I've seen these before in Iceland, they, they tend to form much larger structures, basically big cones, uh, maybe one to two meter tall, uh, steep hills. And these are more depressions. They do have the little bit of the uplifted rim here, but they don't have the, um, the, the larger relief that I would expect to see. Uh, so let's walk over to the interpretive sign and see what it has to say about these features. So right here along the little road and the pathway just behind the Cronin grocery store, they have a little sign here. Um, circular pots about one to two meters in diameter, most likely traces of large bubbles of gas which came up in the molten lava, the walls of the bubble cool down before the bubbles burst at the surface. They are possibly the first stages of a hornito or pseudo crater in formation. Um, yeah, so maybe. I've actually never seen that before. Um, so the idea here would be the gases have coalesced into one large pocket of gases and burst out of the lava. The gas pressure is again able to overcome the pressure and the force of the lava and basically you get just a big bubble popping in the lava and that's possibly what these are. Um, not sure. Uh, I've never, I'll have to look into this a little bit more. That would maybe explain the, the vertical striations as well as the, the gases are escaping. It's moving upward vertically and then you get the little rim around here. So. Yeah, maybe it didn't advance as far as what we would see with like a rootless cone or a hornito, and it sort of just was arrested in its development. But nonetheless, just a really cool feature here 
nice because it's on like a human scale right here in this very scenic spot here uh, along the river and just believe beneath the road so thanks again for joining me on this fun little adventure just kind of a mystery um you know the sign could be 100 percent dead on uh, we came up possibly with a couple other ideas here but i might have to dig into this a little bit more send uh, some of the data with these and observations with these to some colleagues see what they think maybe these are common and i'm just unaware of it or maybe it's something that hasn't been researched much we'll have to see Thanks again for your support of the channel. Thanks for joining me on this little adventure, and we'll see you next time.